Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. I'm really excited to be able to show you a couple of techniques for achieving like a rust effect on your card, your home decor projects, uh, scrapbook pages, whatever it may be. And you can do these in small areas and you can do larger areas as well. I'll show you one of each. Um, lots of different pastes and inks and paints that I'm using, but there's often alternatives if you don't have the exact brands. Uh, anything that I'm using that I can find online for you, I've linked down below. I'd love it if you also uh, went along and subscribed to my channel while you're here, please, because um, there's lots more tips, tutorials and projects coming up in the near future and I wouldn't like you to miss out on any of those. So let's start with the small area rust first. Now I'm going to be using a little piece of, piece of chipboard or MDF. Oh, this is actually grey board, but all similar. I'm going to glue it onto my paper. Now I've already prepared my paper to look a little bit like metal, which does help the effect. So I'm just attaching that there, just so that I've got something raised that I can work against because rust uh, is dimensional. Um, it's very rarely going to form under something that's completely flat. So if you've got a, a ledge or an edge that you can put the rust up against, it does look better that way. Uh, I could paint this, so I could paint this to give it like a metallic look if I wanted to, but I'm just going to show you the rust element. I'm going to be using my uh, glass mat here to mix myself up a bit of a rust paste. Now there's lots of things that you can be putting into this. Now, one thing I love to use is texture gel. Okay, so this is a sand texture gel. Um, this one is from Windsor and Newton. So let's put this. This just means that already you've got that grain. Now this is white, but you've got a grain in there that in within there. So the sand. There are actually bits of sand in there that's really handy to use. So we've got that in there. I think you can just see that there. So what we want to do is build up first of all um, some dimension where the rust is taking effect, but. After that, you actually get the um, the rust water, the, the orange liquid that kind of drips down. Uh, so there's two parts to this rust technique. So I've got obviously a white texture gel. You can just see it in the shadow there. So you can't see much of that at the moment. So I'm going to take um, a brown ink. Now this is one of my watercolor. Uh, so they're water-based inks from textures. I'm just going to put two drips of that. Now this doesn't have to be this brand as I said before it can be um, an alcohol ink that you're using to to do this it could be an acrylic paint uh, just something that's not going to water down the paste too much you want to be able to keep the texture there so just mixing that in and you know what sometimes not having perfect mixing isn't such a bad thing so I've got that I'm also going to just separate and add a black because I've got a black in these inks as well that's really dark a really really um, saturated ink so a drop of black in there too so that's going to give me two different shades so this is going to be where the corrosion will have happened from that rust effect there we go so I've got a black and I've got a brown lovely okay so now the rust effect can happen anywhere where the the, two, the metal will touch things. So imagining that this is a metal world map on, on something. So I'm just going to go around, going to pick up some of that paste. I'm just going to, in patches, just add that around the edge, maybe in here as well. I'm not worrying about which colours I'm using because I'm going to use both of them and just using a palette knife to scrape this on. You'll also get other little patches in various places, but focusing on going around the edge of this shape. Maybe a little bit in the middle as well. Okay, now this texture here at the bottom, I'm going to imagine now, if water's been hitting this and it's been bringing the rust effect down it's going to be dripping down so this corrosion that's happened here that you've created with this texture paste and I'm just dabbing to get some more texture in there will work its way down here and I'm just going to go around and I'm going to dab all these areas as well just to sort of almost blend it out a little bit and spread out that texture so let me just show you so hopefully you can see there the texture that we've got 
Now the next stage you don't actually have to wait for this to dry for this. Um, I think what I'm going to do though just so that you can get a better look at it is spritz it all with um, a brown ink. This is just going to give it an all over look so that it looks like it's uh, more blended in and I'm going to give that a quick dry. So that's just going to uh, colour my chipboard or my grey board and it's going to really show the texture that we've got there from the rust paste that we've created. So this brown ink that I just sprayed is Dilutions, but you can make your own ink sprays with my watercolour inks as well. So this is the urban section that has the brown, the black, the darker red, purple and blue in. And then there's also a bright colour set here. And that's got the, uh, the brighter red, the orange, the blue, the fuchsia pink and the green in. So you can, like I say, you can make your own, <coughs> excuse me, your very own ink sprays like that if you want to. Let's just make sure this is fully dry. Let's just take a piece of a wet wipe so I can just wipe around because I don't want to get this anywhere where I don't want it. So wiping underneath when I've used a spray, very often the sprays will go in places you don't want them to. And then later on on a project, you'll accidentally pick that ink up. So hopefully you can see we've got lots of texture there, but now I'm going to really make it look rust like. So I'm going to take the dropper. This is the orange. Okay, I'm sure you can see that. That's the orange ink there. And I'm actually going to drop the ink into, into that uh, effect there, the rust that we've got and allow it to just spread round and then drip down. And again, I'm going to lift off the excess and as hopefully you can see that as I lift that off, you're left with this orange tinge. So dripping it in, because if you drip it in, it's going to naturally fall around the shape of the element that you want to look rusted on. It's going to give a little bit of a, a, a rusty tinge to things. You can see we've got drips there starting to happen. This actually shows up really nice and bright. So for a rust effect, it's absolutely perfect. A little bit more. So I've only really used about eight or nine drops of this. Just make sure that you're getting right in underneath. And then if you need to, if you're worried you've put too much on, just go in and lift off. You'll see where you lift off, you'll get a brighter orange effect there. There we go. Okay, happy with that. Now, I bring that right up to the camera hopefully you can see there that really looks as if that world map has rusted on you've got the uh, corrosion in the paint or whatever it, whatever surface it may be on the metal and then you've got the orange the, that orange uh, drips and such where the water's run down and carried away that oxidized metal so there's one way of creating a rust effect when you've got something small and you want to um, you want to just add rust to that but what if you want to create a rusted panel so this time we're going to use an orange base and this is going to be our background we're going to just go over the top first of all now I like to use the cosmic shimmer resist paste by Andy Skinner this is brilliant stuff but if you don't have this you can alternatively have a go with um, like Vaseline, petroleum jelly. I know Vaseline is a brand, but petroleum jelly, something like that. So I'm just going to put a bit of this in places. Not too much of it. I'm just going to spread it around a little. Okay. So some areas, probably about 50% of the cardstock has got some of this on and I really have just gone really random with it. Now what I'm going to do is take the acrylic paint. So it doesn't matter what brand it is. So I'm going to take basically my top coat, my top color that I want. This is going to be gray, but since I'm here, I'm going to brayer this on, but I'm also going to add in some of this. So this will be some fantastic texture that I've got left here on my mat. So that's that sand or texture paste with some coloration in there from uh, the watercolor ink, some brown and some black. So I'm just going to start first of all by picking up the gray and run that over until I've got a nice coating on the orange. And then I'm going to pick up some of this texture as well and just add this in. I mean, why not? 
let's take some of this with my brayer as well and add this in there we go and what I'm going to do is uh, allow this to dry because you can see now I'm starting to lift colour up which is not what I want just yet it's not a nice noise is it so give it lots of texture just pressing down on the surface there giving it lots of bumps lumps and bumps I'm going to give that a few minutes to dry in fact I'm going to dry set it with my heat gun and then I'm going to go back over again with some different colours keep building up the colours there so now that's dry I'm going to add a little more uh, grey the grey is a little bit pale so I'm just going to pop a couple of drops of the black textures watercolour ink in there just mix that in just to give me a darker grey but I'm not going I'm not going to mix it perfectly I want to have the mottled look okay lovely now where we've got some areas that have got orange peeking through because of the texture that I've already built up the bread that's why the bread is not reaching those so I'm just going to use my tool here and scrape up and get as much of that color on there as possible you can keep working with this you can just keep going and going and going until you're happy with the color the texture the layering that you've got okay so I've got a lovely it almost looks like a concrete look there love that okay so now let's completely dry that off and clean this surface now when this is dry you can work out where do you want to have your cracks and your creases where do you want to have your rust coming through so let's just fold this in half in fact you don't have to do straight lines by the way you can crum crumple so let's do a crumple let's crunch it up okay and what you'll see you'll notice you're starting to get bits coming through so where we've folded on some of those crease lines just take something like your palette knife um, it could be a craft knife could be a pair of scissors could just use your fingernail whatever it may be and just start to pull those areas back just a little okay just on the peaks could be a bit of sandpaper as well maybe I want to use a piece of that now for me the orange here is a little bit too bright I'm going to dull that down so don't worry about that there we go so just taking some of those areas away so there we start to see our rust coming through we're starting to get a really nice uh, textured piece that looks like it's got rusty bits coming through so, so now I'm going to take a brown blending ink so this is a distress oxide and I'm just going to dab that this is just into areas just to dull down that a little bit but also to give it a little another another color so another third color look at that brilliant okay really starting to get there now to finish this off what I'm going to do is mix myself another paste and this is completely optional but I love doing this so let's take this this time let's go with the structure paste that's from Andy Skinner I'm going to use a smaller amount I don't want a lot here and I'm going to tint it with the brown again you can tint it with brown black you could actually tint it with the orange if you want to go really a real rust color you could tint it with the orange it's entirely up to you there's so many different options when it comes to colors and texture lovely just a touch more just to darken that too of course too much ink into a structure or a texture paste is going to make it really watery so you, don't, you want to avoid doing that now there we go I've got my I've got my texture paste and my brown color I'm going to add in some embossing powder in an orange so the brand doesn't matter if it's got nice chunky bits great because you get more texture uh, an orange or uh, you could put a gold in there a red a green anything you like but what you'll find is you'll then get this kind of another sort of texture paste that's got grit it's got uh, lots of texture in it it's got the sandy effect and it's also got a slight orange hue to it and just add this to areas along near your orange just little just scraping it on and then off again you want to put it on 
There we go. Just on the peaks where you, you folded and crumpled your cardstock. There, if you get little stray bits, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So I'm almost, almost covering over the orange, but leaving a little bit peeking through. So that bright orange that we've got underneath, just little bits of it peeking through. Yeah, let's do the edges of this as well. There we go. A little bit there. Let's scrape it on and off again, because we've got fantastic texture there. Brilliant, okay. Get your fingers in there if you find it easier to blend. Wonderful. Okay, really happy with that. I'm going to dry it off once more. Now, if you've used embossing powder to create some texture, obviously bear in mind at this stage that embossing powder is going to melt with a lot of heat. So you will see some glossy areas coming through. So if you want to keep it strictly matte and just keep the grain of the embossing powder in there, you may want to resist the heating and just let it air dry. One last thing on this, just to give it a uniform shade um, and kind of to blend in where I've done that blending, I'm going to go back to my ink spray, just do from a distance, just a little bit of spritzing there not too much and again just heat set that or allow it to dry so there we go so there we've got two pieces that have the ink now if you see on this one we've got the areas of the orange you can again you can go back in if you, if you feel like you've covered over too much of the orange you can go back in and lift some of those areas up and let's take a look so we've got a full panel you can create a full card project background with that so that was how it started out and then that's the look we've got with bits of rust peeking through there, the bits of orange, that base tone coming through. And then we've got this one where we've actually put on an element, an embellishment, something that's raised up slightly, glued it on. And then we've added the texture from the corrosion that would be in the metal or whatever it is that's rusting there. And then the orange around the edge as well. So they are two different rust effects that you can achieve at home just mixing and matching having a play with all your different mediums and your different colors don't forget everything is linked below that i can find that i've used here for you most of these have alternatives too um, but please do subscribe to my channel i'd love to see you with me more and more as i do more of these technique videos thank you take care everybody Bye bye